Guys, we're talking about the, the debt and how much, you know, what it means to inflation and everything else, and, and which, of course, leads invariably to a conversation we've been having with you now for many years about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. You have been, uh, I think, skeptical, a, a bit reluctant uh, to dive completely into the pool, uh, in part over questions about what regulators will ultimately do, uh, et cetera. I'm, I'm curious whether this Coinbase IPO or the moment we're now in uh, has shifted or changed your views at all about about where all of this is headed? Well, I'm still fascinated about it. I'm encouraged by how many people are focusing on it. I'm encouraged about the narrative. It may become a great asset class, and I do believe this could become a great asset class you know, cryptocurrency. I don't believe it's a substitute for currencies. I think we're going to have cryptocurrencies of dollars, cryptocurrencies of other currencies. But I don't believe uh, we should be focused. We, we should think about crypto as a substitute of currency. But it could. But I am fascinated by it as an asset class. Um, I am still watching. I will tell you of our. You know, our investors worldwide, we don't have that much inquiry on it. Uh, we are investing in it. Rick Reeder has been on your show talking about things that we are doing in it. And we're, we're, we're studying it. We've made money on it. But we're, we're, I'm not here to tell you that we, we are seeing broad-based interest by institutions right. worldwide. And, and you know, I, I, I like the say that most of what we do is a reflection of what we are hearing from our clients. So I would well, clearly so, Larry, tell you that, worldwide. A, Go Larry, on, no, Andrew. What you're saying, no, no, what you're saying, though, I think is very, very important. And I, I just want to put a fine point on it um, because Please. You speak, you're speaking to companies all over the world. And, and you're saying now that you don't believe that companies have a unique interest in this. They're not talking. They're not saying, hey, Larry. Uh, we're thinking about how we can get exposure for our balance sheet. Do you have a product? Can you do something? Are you thinking about creating a product for them? And you're uh, speak speak directly to that because, by the way, that that is the narrative. It's the narrative around, frankly, even the valuations of the coin bases of the world. In part because there's a view <clears throat> that institutional money is desperate to be part of this, and you're saying the opposite. Well, I, I'm not we are not having those conversations and maybe they're talking to somebody else. So I'm not, I don't want to suggest that we have perfect information, but our broad based client relationships um, have ha, we've had very little inter, interconnectivity on the conversation on crypto other than a fascination. I could tell you it is, you know, the amount of conversations we're having on climate risk and how they should navigate portfolios is a major component of the conversation. The conversations about our deficits and the conversations we're now having on inflation risk is far more dominant with our clients worldwide than the whole conversation about crypto. Let's be clear about why you are seeing more interest in crypto. Uh, CNBC is a you know, you are you are commentating about the markets and about today. Um, we didn't have any conversations around Reddit and GameStop. And what does that mean with our clients either? And yet it represented a major component of the markets. And it, it, it was a, it, it's fascinating to watch. So I do believe there's components in the financial markets about crypto that is real, that is growing. But in, but if you're asking me specifically about long term investing, from sovereign wealth funds, from pension funds, from retirement services, from big family offices, the, the conversation about crypto is a, a very minor conversation compared to so many other conversations.